What's up, guys? Your boy DeAndre. We're back here in Between the Lines, episode four. Um, today I'm gonna talk about the top players I feel that are overrated and underrated. For the underrated players, I'm gonna give you their stats and I'm gonna tell you how they show up in different opportunities. And I'm gonna show you if they had a bigger opportunity, how great they how great they would be. Fuck. <laughs> how great they would be. So let's get into it. Um, my first player is Ben Simmons. So I feel like Ben Simmons always gets this knock because he can't shoot. But to me, Ben Simmons affects the game way more than shooting. Now, I feel like with Ben Simmons, yes, he gets knocked for shooting, and that takes away the game from Joel Embiid. But to me, I feel like you got to build a team with just Ben Simmons. You can't have two post-dominant players on the same team. Even though Ben Simmons doesn't really play in the post, but like, he usually drives down there, and that's where he gets his bread and butter. So you can't have those two dominant players on the same team. I feel like you just got to build with one. I would build with Ben Simmons because he's on the court more. He doesn't get hurt like Joel Embiid does. So, hey. But um, Ben Simmons stats, without shooting, 16.7 points, 7.8 rebounds, 8.2 assists, 2.1 steals, 58.7% from the field. That's without shooting. He's an all-star without shooting. So who, who gives a fuck about shooting? But he's always going to get that knock. And everybody always says he doesn't feel like... They don't feel like he wants he wants to shoot. But I guess I guess that's true. But like he affects the game way more. He's dominant on the defensive um, side of the ball. It's only a couple players in the league that I can say can guard one through five positions. And he's one of those players. Uh, other players would be Draymond Green, Jonathan Isaac, Giannis, Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo. So, and he's one of those players. So, I just feel like that's a knock that doesn't really matter when he's 23. And he's, no, he's not even 23. He's like 22. So, he's young as hell. So, he can still get shooting later on in his career. But he doesn't need it to me. If you put shooters around him then he doesn't need to shoot the ball. He can do what he does without shooting the ball. Now, his stats increased without Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid playing. So Joel Embiid was out last year, last season, and Ben Simmons averaged 20, 20.9, 10 rebounds, and 7.5 assists. That's without Joel Embiid playing. This year, he averaged 21.5 without Joel Embiid, 9 9.4 rebounds, 7.5 assists. And with amazing games where he put up a 34, 12, and 12 triple double, and a 28, 10, and 10 triple double, and a 20, and 11, and 6 game. So he shows up without Joel Embiid. That's why I feel like you can't put them two together. And mind you, Joel Embiid does the same thing when Ben Simmons doesn't play. Joel Embiid had a 49 point game. So, like, you can't build with them together to me. I don't feel like they will ever want to work together. So. The, the way to get your best out of Ben Simmons, you just got to surround him with shooters. Um, the GM of that team, I think it's Elton Brand. I think you got to make that decision this year. Which one you want to keep? I'll keep Ben Simmons because it's, way, it's easier to build around Ben Simmons. You just put him around shooters and players that can stick defense, which he can, he can too, but I don't think he can, he can carry the defensive load. So if you put him around shooters and defensive players, then that team will be great because he's dominant. He's dominant. Dominant on transition, you can't stop him on transition because he's too fast, too big. And you can't get past him on offense because he's too long. And he's just a force to be reckoned with. So that's that's why I feel like he's highly underrated because that knock that he gets, he can't shoot. I just feel like people don't understand Ben Simmons. They don't, they don't understand the game of basketball. He doesn't need to fucking shoot. Well, I'm not going to say that. The league's changing, so he does need to at least shoot a mid-range shot. But... I've seen him make that shot. He just doesn't have the confidence yet in shooting it. But even without that, he's an all-star. So, like, who gives a fuck? But um, the next player I feel like is underrated is Colin Sexton. Now, Colin Sexton, when you look at the other guards that was gra- drafted with him, you hear Luka Doncic, um, Trey Young, Shai Gilgis, Alexander. So, he always, he never gets talked about. And he's always gets a lot of hate. They, they always say, oh, he's a 6'1". Um shooting guard so he's he's always gonna get killed on defense and oh he just chucks the ball he just shoots it whenever he wants he doesn't really care about any other, anybody on the team oh he's not a playmaker so I hear that sometimes I agree like 
I don't. I want to say he's terrible on defense because I've seen him go toe to toe with Bradley Beal. I see him go toe to toe with Zach Levine, two of the best scorers in this game, and him hold his own. So I want to say he's terrible because he brings the heart on defense, but the playmaking shit, I don't understand that. And the um, the he's he's not gonna be good at a shooting guard because he just tucks the ball. I don't understand that. He is averaging 20.8 points, 3.1 assists, 3 three rebounds, and one steal a game, 84% from the line, and 50% from the field. 50%. As as a shooting guard, the 6-1, he averages 50% from the field. And most of his shots is not threes. They're in the paint. He averages 12 points in the paint, and he averages 20 points total, but 12 points in the paint. He's 6-1. So that just shows me that He's hard to guard. Like, you will want him to shoot the ball because, again, he shoots 38%, even though that's above average, and he shot 40% last year. But he's so quick that he gets inside, and that's the easy bucket for him. And he challenges he challenges the defensive big man. But to me, I just feel like he got to get to the line more. He got to get get more shots. I think he only averages free, uh, four free throws a game, and his points can easily increase if he gets there five more times and he'll be up to like 10 free throws a game. He can easily be a 22, 23 point scorer a game. And I just feel like he gets that knock because he's on the Cavs. Like, he's on the Cavs. Nobody watches him, so nobody really pays attention to what he does as a point guard. Like, he games when my fifth most underrated player is Jonathan Isaac. Now, I feel like to me he's probably the best defender in the league because Along with Ben Simmons, Draymond Green, Kawhi Leonard, Bam Adebayo, Anthony Davis, he can also guard one through five at an elite level because of how long he is. Now I don't know his wingspan, but I just know that that kid is like tall and he has a long wingspan. Like he can guard any anybody in the league at an elite level. So I just feel like when people think about the, the, the defenders, they think about oh Draymond Green, Kawhi Leonard. Rudy Gobert, they don't never talk about John. <coughs> Sorry, they don't never talk about Jonathan Isaac, and I don't know why, but I just feel like to me he's probably the best defender in the league. Guard one to five at an at an elite level, he gives you twelve points per game, one point four assists, six point nine rebounds, one point six steals, and two point four blocks. It was games this season where he was getting three blocks and three assists. I mean three steals. And it was one game where he shut down Anthony Davis, a legit top five player in the league. So I just feel like once he gets that offensive side going to where he can give you 18 points and let's say four four assists, along with the six rebounds, 1.6 steals, and 2.4 blocks, he's unstoppable because he'll be dominant. He's already dominant on the defensive side. Now you bring that along with the offensive side and just – Get your team more points. Get your team get better at playmaking, so you can get other people open. Cause you're such a force. Cause how big you are, you're gonna you're gonna attract so much attention that people are gonna probably sag off their person and try to double team you. That's the easy kick up. Like once he gets smarter and ner- knows how to play the game, like he'll be unstoppable in this league. So I just can't wait till that happen. Cause I've always been high on Jonathan Isaac ever since he was in Florida State. Cause I always thought he was gonna be like KD. That obviously did not happen because he's not as good as off on offense as KD. But I feel like he can get there. Not all the way. Because KD, to me, is the best scorer of all time. But, like, he can at least average 18 points. And, like, he showed flashes. Flashes of him being a great player in the future. So, that's why I feel like he's really underrated. Like, people don't talk about him that much. But um, my sixth player is ben, Blake Griffin. My fault, Blake Griffin. Now, I had an argument with a guy at work uh, about a couple weeks ago. He told me, well, at least he tried to tell me. I wasn't letting that shit slide. He tried to tell me that Andre Drummond is better than Blake Griffin. And at that point, I basically realized you can't talk basketball with a lot of people. <laughs> you cannot talk basketball with a lot of people. Because that might be the dumbest shit I ever heard in my life. Blake Griffin is way better than him. To me, if he wasn't on the Pistons last year, Blake Griffin would have been top three in uh, MVP voting. Because look at his stats. He averaged 24.5 points, 
points per game, 5.4 assists a game, and 7.5 rebounds a game. That's MVP stats. But it's because he's on the fucking Pistons and they're the eighth seed. Oh, people not going to realize that. People not going to talk about that. But you got to actually pay attention. Like, Blake Griffin, he used to be just known as a dunker. Now he can do everything. He's, other than Draymond Green and Jokic, he's probably one of the best um, playmaking big men we have in this league. And that's a lot to say for a person that was just known as a dunker. And now he's also bringing you 24.5 points and 7.5 rebounds. Like, he has that all-around game that a lot of people want. But I just feel like if he was on a different team, Blake Griffin would be, he would be known, not known more, because a lot of people know Blake Griffin, but he would be respected more. Like, to me, I feel like Blake Griffin has that Hall of Fame career, but I don't think he's going to get it because I don't feel like people respect him or really pay attention to what he's doing. Now, he didn't do nothing this year because he was hurt all year. I think he only played two games this year. But last year, to me, he was top five in MVP voting, and I don't think he made it. I don't even think he was thought about because he's on the Pistons. Like, I just feel like once he gets to a better team that gets more seen from the auto, like from like TV, like gets to a team that gets seen on TV, I just feel like Blake Griffin would be great. And people will actually start to recognize how good he is because – that shit pissed me off. He said Andre Drummond is better than Blake Griffin. Like, I just looked at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? He was like, Andre Drummond averaged 15 to 12. Blake Griffin's averaging 24.5, 5.4 assists, and 7.5 rebounds. And he came back to help Andre Drummond while they were getting swept by the Bucks. He had a torn menis- meniscus, came back and dropped 25. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, he's nowhere near better than we sh- you. This We should not be having this conversation right now. Like, you just pissed me off, but I just feel like as soon as Blake Griffin gets out of there, people will realize how good that man is, because I hate, I hate the hate that he gets. He, to me, he's one of the best basketball players I've ever seen, especially after last year, because he's a perfect package to me. He just needs help. Nobody wants to play in fucking Detroit. Nobody wants to play in Detroit, but the next underrated, underrated player is Christian Wood. Now, he's also on the Pistons, and I feel like He's been thrown around his first few years in the league. He played for the Bucks, played for the Pelicans, and I think he played for the Bucks twice. So like he kept getting traded, kept getting traded. But I think last this year he landed on the Pistons, and he's not having he's not having a good year like he did last year. But the last 13, 15 games after Andre Drummond got traded, like all right, this kid, this kid's nice. Like he's he might be an All Star next year. So last year he averaged 6.9 uh, points per 16.9 point per, points per game, 7.9 rebounds and 1.3 blocks per game. This year he averaged 13.1 points per game, 6.3 and one block a game. Now you might say that's a dip, a big dip in his stats, but let me tell you something. He he plays better when he starts. So Andre Drummond was traded February 6th. So this is his stats ever since February 6th. He's averaging 22.7 points per game, 9.9 rebounds, and one block a game. And he had amazing games against Rudy Gobert, two-time defensive player of the year, and Joel Embiid, who also could be a defensive player of the year, where he put up 30-11 against Rudy and 32-7 and against Joel. So, to me, he has that Giannis effect where he's long and he's quick, so he's hard to stop. When he's just running at you and he has a little in and out or a little handle to where he can pump fake, pump fake at the three-point line, and then quickly get down, go bang it, go bang out. He's quick. He's real quick, and he, he showed flashes where he can be dominant. He dominated Rudy Gobert. He dominated him in the post in that game. He had, what did I say, 30 and 11. He was dominating Rudy Gobert. I just feel like he just doesn't get that look again because he's on the Pistons. But I feel like next year, he might be an all-star. I don't know because the Pistons are still going to be trash. There's only going to be him and Luke Kennard on that team. But I just feel like when he's a starter, I've seen enough to make me realize, like, he's going to be great. And a lot of people don't realize, because not a lot of people watch the Pistons. I watch everybody. I have to watch everybody because I want this to be a profession. I want to talk about sports as a profession, so you got to watch everybody. 
So I watch the Pistons. They're terrible. They're really hard to watch. <laughs> but I watch everybody. So I like Christian Wood. I feel like he's going to be great for a long time because he's so versatile. He he has the length to be able to play defense. He's not that really good at. He's not that good on defense right now, but he he'll get there. He'll definitely get there. As long as playing with Blake Griffin, hopefully Blake Griffin comes back 100%. I forgot about him early. They they're, they're going to be they they can be decent next year. But them together them together going to be nasty. They're going to be real nasty. But um my eighth player is Dennis Schroeder. Now, when you look at the Thunder, you can easily say their success is from Chris Paul, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari. But to me, a main part of that is Dennis Schroeder. So he closes some of their games and he comes off the bench. So if my backup point guard is giving me 19 points per game, 4.1 assists a game, 3.7 rebounds a game off the bench, of course we're going to be winning a lot of games. I'm gonna, I, I love that. I love that. I've seen I've seen games where he closes, and they will run out a three a three point guard lineup, and Chris Paul is the one, Dennis at the two, and Shea at the three because Shea is six seven. So I just feel like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Dennis Shooter, Dennis Shooter can be a starter in this league. Like imagine if imagine if he was starting. So if he was getting a full thirty five minutes, those stats can easily be twenty four points, eight assists, six rebounds, like. To me, it's easy for him. Like, when I watch him, it's easy for him to play. I mean, my next player is Robert Covington. Now, he was traded from the Minnesota Timberwolves to the Houston Rockets. And I thought he was just going to play their small forward role. But they actually switched his role to the five, which was confusing me. Because I've always looked at him as a person that can guard one through four. I was like, he can't guard. He can't guard the five position. He's going to get killed. I was completely, I was completely wrong. So... He can legit guard one through five now. After what I seen, he averaged twelve point eight points, seven point nine rebounds, and one point three assists in his fourteen game with the Rockets. Now that's probably nothing to you, but for a team like the Rockets, that's a lot because they don't need him to score. They just need him to be that that person that all right, we can kick the ball out to you. You can hit a couple threes, and you can give us elite defense. So. What I mean on elite defense is he's averaging 1.1 steals and 2.5 blocks as a 6'7 center. So, in his 14 games as a Rocket, he he recorded 15 steals and 35 blocks as a Rocket. 35 blocks and 15 steals in 14 games is amazing to me. Real real crazy, real crazy. I didn't think he he could fuck with Anthony Davis. Like, he, shut, he didn't shut Anthony Davis down, but like... He blocked Anthony Davis a couple times, and it was one game he recorded five um, five blocks. I don't know which team that was against. I should have looked that up, but he recorded five blocks in one of his 14 games with the Rockets. Like, I didn't think he was that versatile of a defender where he can guard the post and he can guard the perimeter at an elite level. So I just feel like Robert Covington gets, Robert Covington gets overlooked as far as the media, but as far as the NBA, every team wants a Robert Covington. Because he does everything you want. And he doesn't want to be that star. Like, he doesn't want to go out there and give you 20 points. That's not his game. He realizes, all right, you want me here to shoot the ball and defend and just be that team player. So I feel like I understand why every team wants him, but the media overlooks his impact. So I just feel like Robert Covington is really underrated to me. And another person that the media overlooks the impact is Kyle Lowry. That's my last... Well, I have one more. That is my second to last underrated player. Kyle Lowry. The media hates Kyle Lowry. I don't understand why. I don't understand it. They always says he chokes in the playoffs. That's just, that shit's done. After last season, in the finals, game six, that shit, that choking in the playoffs, that shit's done. In the playoffs, game six, came out in the first half, dropped 22 points. Steph Curry cannot fucking guard him. He was fucking Steph Curry up. Bro, he's so he's he gets so overlooked because everybody be like, oh he's fat. Like what the fuck does that have to do with basketball? He can play. He, he can play. The kid go he can give you eight he gave you eighteen point seven assists and three and two steals. He can give you that. But he gets overlooked. Because he's fucking Kyle Lowry. Like, people don't like that game because his game is not really exciting to watch. He's 
this a three point shooter. He can create his own shot, but like it's not something fun to watch. But like on the other side of the ball, he's elite. As a six one guard, he's elite elite defender. And the media doesn't like him because I don't feel I feel like they don't understand him. They don't understand what his what he's his purpose is there for. Like people were clowning him because he was taking charges in the in the um all star game, but like that's what he does. He's a winner. He wants to win. So I just feel like he's one of the most underrated players of all time to me by the media. Like they don't they don't understand his 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 purpose. Everybody be like, why is he in all star game? Cause he's a fucking all star. He gives you eighteen and seven, and elite defense as a six one all six one point guard. Like to me, he's a dog. He's a dog. So I just feel like people need to pay attention to what he actually does, and stop stop thinking about oh he's not that person that we want to watch because he's not really exciting to watch. But like it's way more than that. And to me, he's not a first battle Hall of Famer, but I will put him in the Hall of Fame, most definitely. It's at, especially after last year, when he fucked the Warriors up in Game Six. Kawhi, Kawhi won Finals MVP, but he said he said Kyle Lowry was definitely MVP in that last game. He won them that last game because he set the tone, dropping twenty two in the first half. They could not guard him. They couldn't. It was over as soon as I seen that. It was it was over as soon as he dropped that twenty two points. He couldn't come back for it from it, even though they was in the game. But once you set that tone, it's hard to come back from. It. But my last player that I feel like is underrated, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate from me from this, is Draymond Green. Along with Kyle Lowry, I feel like people don't understand Draymond. Now. Yes, Draymond does affect from playing with Stephen Clay. But, like, what the fuck you want him to do? He got drafted into that situation. Now he's making the best out of it. To me, first ballot, a Hall of Famer. Because he's a winner. So, his stats. 7.4 points per game. 6 assists. 6.8 assists a game. 7.3 rebounds a game. 1.4 steals, 1.1 block. Now, that's not amazing. This is last year, by the way. I'm not going to name this year because he kept getting hurt and some games he just didn't feel like playing, so he didn't play. So I'm not going to talk about this year. Plus, he didn't have nobody to play with. He was playing with a bunch of rookies and sophomores. So I'm not going to really put this year on him. So last year, those stats, yeah, they're not amazing to watch. But you're playing with KD, Steph, and Clay. Players that can give you 25, top 15 players in this league. You don't need him to average that much points. Every other thing is perfect. 6.8 assists. He's the main assist person on that team. He's number one in assists on that team. 7.3 rebounds, number one on that team. 1.4 steals, number one on that team. 1.1 blocks. I can't really tell you if he's number one on that team, so I don't want to lie about that. But he, everything else... Number one on that team. He affects that team. You've seen Steph Curry and Clay say without Draymond, they would not have won. And people be like, yes, the fuck y'all would. But, like, no, they would not because he is that defensive anchor. He get he sets that tone because he's such a leader. And he impacts the game beyond just defense because after Jokic, he's the best big playmaker we have in this league. He's the best playmaker as a big man. So he gets overlooked because his off-the-court antics and... How he talks too much off the court and also on the court when he gets tech he te- gets teed up and he complains a lot, but like that's because he wants to win. He's so he's so passionate about winning that he he'll do it all. He'll just do it all. And on the court he's such a leader, a vocal leader. Like everybody says he's the heart of that team. Even though he's not the best player on that team, he's the heart of that team. He does everything. He knows where you're gonna be at on offense, so he it's easier it's easy for him to give you the ball. One of the best screen setters I've ever seen. Him and Steph Curry had this play. Steph Curry will come down in transition. Draymond set that screen. Draymond fades out. Draw the two defenders come up to Steph. And Draymond, Steph passed the ball to Draymond. And now what that would do is that would bring another defender over to Draymond. And he'll throw the lob to a... It's usually Andre Godala, but over the past years has been... 
Alfonso McKinney, Kevin Durant, um, Harrison Barnes. So, like, they run that play at least, like, five times a game, and it always works because he's all he always sets the tone in that one screen. Now, obviously... People think Steph's gonna shoot it, so they're gonna double him. So I agree with that. He does he does affect from playing with them too. But still he sets the tone with that screen. He cuts and he always knows that a defender's gonna come on to him, so he throws that alley hoop and it always works. Like he knows everywhere you're gonna be at. He's a great leader on defense where he can he's a great helper on defense. Great in rotation. He tells you where you need to be. Vocal leader, he he's all that on defense. He's a great post defender. He's only 6'7", but, like, it's hard to score on Draymond because he's, like, he's stronger than people think he is. So, another reason, the main reason why I feel like he's underrated is people don't know his stats when it matters. People don't know his stats when it's time to win. So, game 5, 2016. They, they were losing. I think they lost that game. And Draymond got suspended because he hit LeBron in the nuts. LeBron stepped over him. He pushed him. And it happened to be in the nuts area. And Draymond, (laughs) he had history of hitting people in the nuts. So they suspended him for one game. Now, me, I feel like if he wasn't suspended, they would have won game six. And they would have won the finals. But they didn't. So they went to game seven. Other than LeBron, Draymond was the best player in that, that court. Draymond dropped 32 points, 15 rebounds, 9 assists, 2 steals, and 6 threes. Draymond is not a 3-point shooter. He can't fucking shoot. But in the Game 7, where he just let down his team in the Game 6, and in Game 7 when they need him the most, he goes out and be, be the best the best player on his team. Because Clay and Steph, they had a horrible game. They both have horrible, horrible games. But... He knows when it's time to win. All right, I got to turn up. So 32, 15, 9, and 2 in six threes. People don't realize that. People don't ever think about that. Like, he showed up when they needed him. And you might be like, all right, that's just one game. Go watch last season Draymond Green versus the pay, um, Portland Trail Blazers in the playoffs. He said before that series, he said... I realize my my game is getting kind of weird because I'm doing more talking than I'm doing playing. Go watch what he responded to after that. After he said that statement, other than Steph Curry in that series, he was the best player in that in that series. And that series was filled with Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, Klay Thompson, other players that you would think is better than Draymond. But after Steph Curry, it was nobody else. It's nobody else. He dominated. You can even say he was the best player in that series because he dominated on both sides of the ball. They ran that play. I said with Steph Curry, they ran that play where he comes off the screen and get throws the alley hoop. They ran that play every game. He was stopping everybody in in the defense. All the big men he had and his canter blocked him <laughs> every game. Um, the only game that he had trouble with on the defensive side, and this was just the first half because. This kid made every shot. It was my when Myers Leonard dropped 30 in the first half? That's because he kept making every three. Like he was hot. He was hot. He didn't want to get swept, but they ended up getting swept. But like he was hot. So that was the only game you could say Draymond didn't have a good game. But after that, he turned up. Draymond turned up. I can't tell you the stats in that series because I couldn't find them. But like, go watch. Go watch. I'll probably if I can figure it out. I'll leave that link in the description. Of what he did, it's a two, 12 minute and 27 second video. Go watch it. He dominated that whole team. And to me, Draymond is the playoff player. He's not going to give you these astonishing stats in the regular season. He understands he's a playoff player. He's a winner. So he, he has to turn up in the playoffs, and that's what he does most of the time. So I just feel like his off the court antics and him talking too much. Sometimes him saying some dumb shit, that just gets the bad look on people. And he can be cocky, so people just automatically hate him, but they don't understand how good Draymond is. And to me, he's a Hall of Famer, one of the best defenders of all time. And he's the main, not the main piece, but like he's the heart of the, that Warriors dynasty that we've seen for the last five years. And I hope he comes back next year and does the same thing. So, 
We'll see. So, my overrated players, I'm going to start with a person that I feel like is overrated just because of the media. Zion Williamson. Williamson. As a player, he's not overrated. So, don't get me wrong. Great player. Rookie, averaging 24 points. Eight rebounds, great player. The media overrates him so much and gets annoying. So, it started off in college. He was great in college, I get it. But it got to the point where they were having camera cameras only focus on him during his games. And they showed, they showed him squeezing the ball and how his fingers put a dent in the ball. If you don't know, every basketball is not blown up all the way. So, like, it's not going to be... It's not hard to squeeze the ball and show your finger imprints on the ball. So, like, they're just gassing it because it's him. Because every player in the league, every player in the world can do that. They can squeeze the ball, put it in the ball. It's not It's not hard. It's not. And then when it comes to the league, like the NBA, they're bringing, they're bringing these 22 teams. And they make sure to put his team in there so they can get more views and get most of their money back. Because Zion is such a great player. To watch. And. Like on the media. Like on Instagram. Twitter. Like. It's always cameras around him. And it's always posts about him. Now he's. He might be the cover of 2K. Like. When. He doesn't deserve it. Cause he only played fucking. 18 games. But. They're just gonna do it. Because Zion. And like. That can. It's overrated. And it gets annoying. Like. Don't fuck this dude's career up because you want to be around him so much. And, like, just make him such... He's already a popular person, so, like, just let it be. Let it be. Like, stop following him everywhere. Stop. Stop making these little dumb, dumb stats and shit. And stop just giving him so much attention. He's only a kid. Like, let him chill. (laughs) Let him relax. (laughs) Please. But... My next player who I feel is underrated, Andre Drummond. Now, I talked about this just in my last episode. No, my first episode, actually. So, I wouldn't have said this uh, a couple months ago, but when Andre Drummond recently ended up on my team, he started pissing me off a little bit. So, when he first got traded, they traded him with, they traded him for John Henson, Brandon Knight, and a second-round pick. Two players that didn't even play on the Cavs. So I was like, yeah, we get a former all-star on our team. Let's see what we can do. But his mindset coming in, coming into this team is he wants to be the number one option. And he wants to be that point forward. That is not your game. You're not a point forward. You're a great rebound, probably one of the best ever at rebounding. And you're great at getting them um, rebounds and putting the ball back in the basket. So you get some of your points from that, then you get some of your lobs and shit. But you will have him get a get a defensive rebound, then try to push the ball. Like, dude, you're not you're not a point guard. You're not a point forward. You're not that good at playmaking. You're not you don't have that good of a handle to even be trying that. And most of the time you would do that, it'll end up in a turnover. Like, just chill out. Like, we have two young guards on that team. Once you get the rebound, pass it to them young guards, because we gotta grow them. Run the floor. Do stuff that you were traded for that we wanted you to do. And we needed you to be that rebounder. We needed you to get these offensive rebounds, put the ball back in the board. I mean, in the, in the basket. Run the floor. Get these lobs. Play decent defense, which I give him I give him that. He plays good defense. But, like, just stop trying to be that point forward. That's not your game, Andre. I, that's, that's one thing I did not like when he came over here. I didn't like that at all. But uh, my next player is Kyrie. As far as Kyrie being one of the top players in this league, yes, he is. He is. But along with Zion, he's that fan favorite toward, towards they like him and they overrate him over some of the best players in the league. You will literally have players argue with me that, I mean with anybody, just argue that, Kyrie is better than Russell Westbrook or Steph Curry or Damian Lillard. And to me, that's not an argument. None of those players, that's an argument. Because all of those players can be a number one on the team. 
Uh, you can make an argument for Russell Westbrook, but Russell Westbrook showed me that he can carry a team to the playoffs by himself. Kyrie never showed us that. Before LeBron came, the team was the worst team in the league. When he went to the Celtics and he got hurt, that team, when he got hurt, that team went to the Eastern Conference Finals, so they did better without him. Then the next season, they get um, they get knocked out in the second round with with Kyrie. This season, yes, he played a little bit of games, but look what they did with Spencer Dinwiddie. They're in the playoffs, seventh seed. You can't tell me they would have did that with Kyrie. They would have probably been an AC, but like, I feel like people overrate him, and he's just not that number one option that he thinks he is. Like. With the position he's in now, when KD comes back, that's going to be great because he flourishes as that second option. And I just feel like people overrate him, make him feel way higher than he is because to me, he's top five point guard. And even at that, that's a debate. Like I said, I'm high on Ben Simmons. I'm not crazy. I'm not going to put uh, Ben Simmons over Kyrie. But Ben Simmons keep playing like he did when Joel and B was out. I might. <laughs> I might because Ben Simmons is on both sides of the basketball. He can play both sides. Kyrie's an elite offensive player, but on the defensive side, he's a liability. A liability. He's hard to play with, and he has this little attitude that he's better than everybody. And I'm sure he's a nice guy, so I'm not gonna say that. But that's what the media makes of him. They make him seem like he's an asshole. When I don't know why he is off the court, but. Kyrie just needs to understand his role as the second best player on the team. You can you've shown a lot of people that you're not that number one option, and he gets all this attention because probably him or AI, the most exciting player to ever watch, because he gives you all that dribble and dribble, step back threes, oh jelly layups, like all the stuff that my generation and everybody likes. So I understand why they put him on that pedestal, but he's just not there. He's not up there. But um, my next player is Devontae Graham. Now, yes, he's had a great season. Last year, he went from averaging two points to averaging 18 points. And this year, he averages 18 and seven. But the dude, his field goal percentage is 38. 38 is terrible. <laughs> It's terrible. You have people telling me that he's better than Colin Sexton. What? What does he do? Bring that playmaking on on the um, offensive side? That's it. Because he gets killed on defense. He shoots 38% from the the field goal. And he just shoots a lot of threes. He shoots seven threes a game. So, most of those shots are threes. But, like, as a lead guard, you can't be shooting shooting 38% from the field goal. And you gotta learn how to round the game out. You gotta be at least respectable on the defensive side. Like he gives you one side of the ball, and even on that side of the ball, it's not amazing. It's not something that I'm, I'm gonna pick that like to be my lead guard because, yes, it's 18 and seven, but it's on 30 percent from the field. And he's a person that you need pieces around him. Now he's shown flashes, so flashes that he can be a lead guard this season, but. You will need the right pieces around him. You need that defender right next to him as a two. You you need that other star to be the main scorer on that team. So I'm not gonna say he's terrible, but to me, like he's overrated because this great year that he's having. Like people will still say he's um most improved player just because he jumped up in points and he had a couple great games in the beginning of the season. And in, in the beginning of the season, don't get me wrong, he was an all star. He could have been an all-star in the beginning of the season. But after that, that dip, points dip, um, assists dip. He was having great games in the beginning of the season. But everything just started falling apart. And I pe- think people still thinking about the beginning of the season when they think about Devontae Graham. But like to me, he's he's cool. But he will flourish in the backup point guard role. But I don't know. We'll see. But my last underrated player, I mean overrated player, I didn't have a lot because I didn't feel like a lot of people are overrated. Like, a lot of people are just where they are. But this player, the reason why I feel like he's overrated is because, to me, he's in the wrong position. But that team think he's the right person for that team. And my player is Eric Bledsoe. So, 
yes, he's an elite defender. And yes, he's a decent playmaker. But when it comes down to it, terrible in the playoffs. Last season, he thought 38% was bad from the field. Last season in the playoffs, Eric Bloso was shooting 28%. 28. 28%. That is terrible as a lead guard. But he kept getting that starting role because who are you going to start? Grant Hill? Probably would have been a good starter, but I wouldn't start that. Eric Blussell in the regular season almost made an all-star. Set two years in a row. Playoffs. 28% from the field. I don't know his three. I couldn't find his three-point percentage in the playoffs. But like I told you a couple episodes ago, he was just chucking threes and missing every single one of them. Like, he was terrible last year in the playoffs. So once I see from him that he can perform in the playoffs, I won't see him as overrated. And mind you, I don't... He's overrated, but not by, like, a landslide. Like, people don't put him on that high pedestal of point guards, but, like, for that team, I just feel like this is not the player y'all need. And they signed him to an extension, so, like, they feel like, all right, we need Eric Blusso. But like, to me, I don't need Eric Blusso. Y'all need a better point guard. You know? A point guard that can shoot. And playmate, but also give you that defensive side. And they was to get a Spencer Dinwiddie. That will fill all their needs. I just thought about that. If they was to get Spencer Dinwiddie, that would fill all their needs because Spencer Dinwiddie can defend, he can playmate, he can shoot, and he can close. The thing about the Bucks is they don't have a closer. Because Giannis is not a he's not a person that can end you the game because he doesn't really have nothing but that little drop to the basket body and shit. And Chris Middleton, he showed in the playoffs last year that he was inconsistent. So, once, I just think they need they need Spencer Dinwiddie. That would be a good pair. But for Eric Bosa to get off this under overrated list is just show up in the playoffs, man. <laughs> show up in the playoffs. Show me that you was worth that money. Because to me, I, I think he got $80 million. He was not worth that much money. No, I don't think so. But... I don't know, but um, that's it with overrated and underrated, but um, I said I'm going to make some changes to this YouTube page. Now, this one, uh, I'm not going to be doing music on this page because it's going to be so much to put in. Like, my my um, episodes are usually like 40, 50 minutes. I think this one's going to be like 40 minutes or 50. So, it'll be hard to add that with, uh, with music, talk about 40 minutes of sport, then, like, at least talk about 30 minutes of music. Like, that's too long. That's hard to listen to. Like, when I listen back to myself, like, I gotta listen to bits and pieces because sometimes, like, I be stuttering and shit. <laughs> so, I'm, uh, I'm gonna do a music podcast with my friend. We started it already, and we're gonna post a video today. I hope. I hope. We already recorded two of the episodes, so look out for that. I'm gonna put that in the bio, our YouTube page in the bio, so... I'm not going to be doing music on here no more, so I got to change my logo, take the little music signs out of it. I might make a more deaf logo. I might try to make something else, but, um, yeah, that's it for today. Um, hope everybody stays safe, like, and subscribe, turn your, um, the bell on next to the subscribe button so you can get every time I drop a video and bear with me because this episode was hard because there was a lot of stats and I have a speech impediment so I was stuttering a lot <laughs> and I had I'm gonna have to edit this video because I kept having to stop <laughs> but just give me some love on the like button and tell your friends spread it out and it's only gonna be up from here peace out y'all